How's it growing? Recently, I had an amazing experience with aphids and aphid predators, and this completely changes the way I manage them in the garden from now on. And I sure wish I knew about this years ago, and I can't wait to share with you what happened. Maybe you've had this experience where you buy ladybugs and they didn't stick around long enough to finish the job as you expected. Later I'll share how to attract ladybugs and keep them in your garden. As you probably know by now, Cynthia Schaefer and I bring different approaches to organic gardening on this channel. But more and more lately, I've been willing to give some of her methods a try and I'm excited to share my experience in the past year with aphids and aphid predators because it was a huge success in my garden. Aren't ladybugs amazing? As well as eating aphids, they're known to eat whiteflies, spider mites, mealybugs, and more. But for now, let's talk about aphids. You're about to hear what I shared with the Rare Fruit Council of St. Lucie recently. And since I gave this talk, I continue to see this happen again and again in my garden. How many of you have bought ladybugs? Yeah, bought ladybugs. Okay, I have. I've, I've done it a number of times. And what normally happens when you buy ladybugs? Right. So 24 hours, if you do it right, missed everything first, do it as the sun's going down, follow the book, they usually fly away. About half of them will be gone 24 hours later. 48 hours later, you'll be lucky to, to find a few. I have had an experience recently where a special plant that I'm going to talk about later, and I have one for auction, a special plant that I notice aphids. I'm like, uh, I'm trying to avoid neem oil. Well, if you've, if you've seen my videos on YouTube, you'll notice that uh, Cynthia Schaefer, but. who is hardcore sustainable, right? <laughs> Hardcore sustain. She doesn't use even organic pesticides. And I'm like, I'm not there yet. <laughs> Her motto is, what would the forest do? No one's going around spraying for this or that. And look how the ecosystem works. It's in balance. Getting back to this experience that I had. So as when I saw the aphids, I thought, well, there's a ladybug. I'm gonna hold off before I even spray it out. With, sometimes I'll spray off the, the aphids with the water hose. Let's just hold off doing anything. Well, the next day there were two ladybugs and they were doing their thing, doing their thing. There wasn't a day over a period of six months where I didn't see at least one ladybug or ladybug larva or a ladybug in some stage of growth. This is well, maybe someone here could tell me. Larva. This is ladybug larva that is about to pupate. So they're in that transition period to adulthood. This is a variety, uh, the black ladybug with the two dots on the back, they call it twice stabbed. Yeah. They cleaned up that tree. There are no aphids. The ants, you know, how ants will farm the aphids because what the aphids secrete is like crack to them. So they got this crack house going and they're going up and down the, the up and down the trunk. Well, they gave up because <laughs> okay. they, all they were doing, they were serving, there was like a ladybug restaurant. The servers were the ants. Those ladybugs never really left. I still to this day, and that was, so it's been close to a year where almost every day I could find a ladybug there. And then on my bean plants that I just planted for the cool season about a month or so ago, same thing, had the aphids. I mean, there were some places on the vines where it was getting a little much. And I was a little concerned, okay, ladybugs, where are you? <laughs> They're over here. So uh, I would spray off where it was getting a little too bad. Well, the ladybugs did find it. The experience that I had prior to this, I have had where I said, I'm, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Cynthia Schaefer's method of just letting nature take care of itself. And the ladybugs took 
too long to, and not just ladybugs, also those wasps, the uh, wasp, I forget what they're called. Anyway, where they lay their, they inject their eggs in, in the aphid. So it's not just the ladybug predators. Okay, I need to add something here. I have a theory as to why ladybugs leave. Let me know what you think about this. When you buy ladybugs, they were bred in a lab and they've never had a chance to be out in nature. Sure, they're gonna check out what you have for them, but they don't stick around long. Why? Because they've never been out in nature. They've never had a chance to explore and go wherever they want. Okay, let's get down to the key, the main point. So what did I do differently between that first time when ladybugs showed up too late and what I'm experiencing now? Here's how, and this is the key, have a sacrificial plant. I let those ants farm their aphids on that grafted eggplant tree once I saw a ladybug. And now I have certain plants that aphids love that I let the aphids have at it. And that gives the aphid predators a reason to stay and even start a family here. Oh, ants are delivering us food? Fantastic. Let's lay some eggs here. And while we're at it, let's let our friends know about this place. When I planted my fall and winter garden for the season, just like any year, aphids showed up on my pole bean plants. It wasn't long before ladybugs found them and they weren't the only predators to find them this time. For the first time, I witnessed the predatory wasp inject its eggs into the aphids. And this wasp is why I got this blanket flower plant. It's known to attract these beneficial wasps. I got this from my friends at Tree Amigos in Divi. It's called Lorenziana gallardia. This butterscotch chapadilla had aphids on it a few weeks ago. The old me would have panicked. Oh no, aphids, get the neem oil. Oh, let's spray them off with the hose. But I simply walked away and trust nature to take care of it. A week later, I found ladybugs were cleaning it up. The same thing happened with these bean vines. Then before I even knew I had aphids on this African horn melon, I saw ladybugs all over having a feast. When I featured Cynthia Schaefer in that spotlight episode, I talked about how she's hardcore about sustainability and I'm not quite there yet. Well, now I can say I'm one large step closer. And I don't know where you are with this, but I encourage you to at least try the sacrificial plant method. And once you get started, you won't need to specify one sacrificial plant. Aphid predators will just show up and be patient, trust mother nature to do her thing. If you got something out of this, please consider giving me a thumbs up like on this video, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell so that you'll be notified when I upload videos in the future, and let's grow together. Mm -hmm.